Hi everyone, Ricky here from Tech Talk. Hope you are doing well. Today we're taking a look at the ZTE Blade A512. Thanks to Vodafone for sending this out, so please give them a thumbs up as it does help. So today is the basics, so going through multiple different things. First of all, I'll show you how to insert your SIM card and an SD card so you can store more media on your device. So first of all, two things, make sure it's powered off as you can damage the device and make sure you have the correct SIM tool as some SIM tools may not work. So you should get SIM tool in your box with this. So what you do as it is powered off at the moment, on the left hand side here, you can see a little hole where I need to put this pin into. Put that in there, push down quite firmly, but straight. And your tray will pop out and it's actually made of metal which is a nice change most of these are made out of plastic and can be quite fiddly so first of all your sd card just make sure that sits on there nicely and then your sim card here so mine is a vodafone one here and it is the smallest of the small so it is a nano sim So they should look both like this and they should feel flush on there that there's no edges. So if I just bring this up close, this is how they should both look. So I've got my tray here, I've got my device. What I need to do is just line them up. Push all the way in, push all the way in, make sure that is clipped in. Then on the right hand side, you do have a power button. So give that a press and then we're gonna get into the loading screen just make sure that we've got signal and then our SD card should be able to use straight away or sometimes it may ask you to actually restore it so that means wiping it and starting again fresh so please make sure you do back up just in case okay so as we can see SD card is here we've got Vodafone UK and our signal is coming through so we're all good to go so unlocking our device here so the next step I want to show you is your Wi-Fi setup. So you may need to use Wi-Fi as you might not have a good strong signal indoors or also you may want to actually store the, your data uses for when you're out and about. Using Wi-Fi will not use your data usage, so sliding down. So this is your widget drawer here. So you can change multiple things. As you can see, you've got display. So this is the icon that we're looking at at the moment and it's Wi-Fi and it's turned off. As you can see, the ones in highlighted in white are actually the ones turned on. So what you want to do is hit this little down arrow here, then choose your Wi-Fi. So mine is the top one as it is the strongest. Yours most probably will be as well. So it's the sky one. What it will do is take you into the Wi-Fi settings and then you get insert your password here. Okay, so once that's done, you can actually show your password if you so want to go through advanced settings. At the moment, I'm just gonna hit connect. So it's verifying it and then it should say connected as it does here. And you can see the Wi-Fi symbols up here now instead of the phone signals. So if we go back home, if I just slide back down again, carry on down, you can see now that is highlighted white and it's actually got our internet connection provider there and it's saying it is connected so make sure you do this first things first and you will save your data going back home maybe you've done that now the next thing you may want to do is set up a google account so it may ask you to do this actually in the setup process which i have shown as well so go and have a look at my unboxing video and the link will be in the description and also i'll add it on the end of the video so you can click the thumbnail so go into the google play store here so it's gonna realize that I haven't got an account connected. So if you've got an account, you can sign in here, or if you haven't, you will need to create one. And why would you need to do this? You need a Google account to buy all your apps, to buy music, movies, TV shows, games, and books as well. Or anything you want to actually use, or even if you want to use Google Pay, you will need a Google account. So what you need to do, first of all, if you have one, sign in here. If not, create one. So I'm gonna sign in with mine. The next step is actually gonna ask you for your password for that account, so make sure you do know it and insert your password here. Then what you're gonna do is hit next, accept. So that's actually installed here. So Google services, so we can say automatically backup. 
I don't want to do that at the moment, so I'm gonna say next. It's just letting me know that I've signed in with a different device. And here is the Google Play Store. So it looks a little bit squeezed together. That's because I have got large text on, so I just want to let you know. So you have your apps and your games, and you have entertainment. So entertainment is where you're gonna find all your media. So your music, TV shows, movies, everything is in there and there is plenty of stuff and there's really good prices actually as well so let's go and get our first application so we can go top games here or top charts so pokemon go has just had a bit of an update gen 2 are coming now for people that are fans of pokemon go so let's install this so all you do is press install so if it is a purchased application where you may have to purchase it you may need to add either a PayPal account or a bank account, so please bear that in mind. Any parents that are new to Android devices, you can set up parent controls where you can actually stop in-app purchases and you can stop over usage as well, so you don't get any of them high bills. So as you can see, our application is downloading here. So while that is just doing, if we go back here, so this is a back button down here at the bottom, if we go into entertainment, so in the entertainment, we're gonna find something that maybe like there's trolls, stalks. So what you do is click on a film here. You can watch a trailer up there at the top if you so wish to. And then also you can buy or you can rent here. So once you click the buy, it'll ask you for your payment details and then you can download that and it'll be stored on your device and on your Google account. So don't worry if you have a new phone and you want to change or upgrade, just take the SIM card out and the SD card out put it in your new one, log in with your Google account and your purchases will be there, do not worry. You can go into your settings of the SD card or you can eject it there. So let me talk to you about these three main function keys down here at the bottom. So you have your back button, you have your home button, which is a circle, and then you have your menu button. So if I tap this menu button, you can see all the open applications. If you dismiss these one by one, or at the top there, you've got clear all and we can jump back into an open application. Make sure to clear them as often as you can as it will help with the RAM as well. So if we go back home here, we're now back on the home screen and that will always bring you back home. Touching and holding this will load Google and you can talk to Google and get all the latest information from Google like your weather, plan transport or find any information out you so need. Like I said, that back button will always take you back home. There we go, our application has just loaded in there and installed. So you can actually move this by touching and holding. All I've done was touching and holding the application, I didn't press it. So I can actually put this on the home screen and it's there ready to go. Or I can actually drag and drop it into a folder and rename that folder. So touching and holding again, I can drag it to the top. This will either uninstall it or delete it permanently. The choice is yours. If you do not like the standard wallpaper that comes with your phone here, you can touch and hold, so press and hold for quite a while. So you can change your wallpaper or add a widget. So if we go into our wallpapers here, I can change these. So I like this one, set, back home. There we go, we've got a new wallpaper, that easy. Touch and holding again, go into widgets. I like this clock here, take this clock, place it there. There we go, that was how easy it is. Touching and holding the widget area, you can actually move that clock around to wherever you want it, so you can make the device yours. Sliding down from the top, so we have our notification area here, just letting us know that the Pokemon Go application was installed and ready to use, so we can swipe that away. Pulling down with two fingers, it will find all your multiple settings that you use majority of the time. So first one, we have brightness, we have Wi-Fi, we have Bluetooth, we have do not disturb, We've got aeroplane mode, so do not disturb, will actually bring you notifications and have signal on your phone, but won't make any noise or any vibration. Aeroplane mode will totally dismiss all signals and Wi-Fi bars, so you won't get any information. It would just like it's turned off, but if you maybe wanna to listen to music on the train, or just have a quiet time, just maybe looking through stuff on your phone that is there. If you need more settings, press the cog up the top and that will take you to more settings. Next thing I want to talk about is security. So security is very key as we do have a lot of personal data on these devices now. So what you need to do is go into your main app drawer here. Then you need to go into settings. Then in settings, you need to go to security. So in settings here and in security and then lock screen settings, you can have swipe, which I've just got at the moment. You've got pattern or you've got pin or you've got password. 
So if we go for a pattern here, first of all, it asks if you want a pattern to actually turn on your device. I'm gonna say no, thank you. So you can just draw a basic pattern. Then it will ask you to draw it again. Then it will ask you to show your notifications if you so wish to. Done. So if we actually go back home, lock the device this time. I can't get in it without making that pattern. There we go. Then you're into your device. So nice and simple. So on the lock screen, I just want to show you as well, you have some quick launch applications. So you can still get into your camera here, but you won't be able to see what's actually in your library, but you can get into your camera. So say you maybe have some software on here or some applications that you don't want and you don't know how to clean it up. There is a way to actually reset this right back to factory settings. So what you need to do, make sure you back up beforehand but go into settings again, go into backup and reset, then factory reset, and then hit erase everything. This will erase all data and information on your phone and we'll set it as you got it brand new out of the box. So I hope this helps. If you do have any issues with the ZTE Blade A512, please leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, hello, I'm Ricky and welcome. Please subscribe for all our latest news, reviews and unboxings. If you enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.